Good afternoon, everyone. We're going to give it just a couple of more minutes for people to log on to today's webinar. I am excited to see you today. Thank you for joining. Just a couple more minutes and we will get started. Again, thank you for joining our webinar. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and get started today and we may have some more people continue to join us and that's okay too. We are also recording for those who don't know me or who I have not had the opportunity to meet. My name is Chrissy Thornton. I'm the executive director of the Myositis Association. And today we are going to talk about all things annual patient conference. Uh, like many of you, I am excited to participate for the first time in the 2022 annual patient conference. As you may remember, um, I started in, at TMA in January of 2021, which means that my annual patient conference experience has been limited to the fully virtual conference that we held last year. And while that was an amazing virtual online experience, I am very, very excited to um, participate and to see the in-person annual patient conference this year in September in Orlando, Florida. So many of you have had questions for months now. Um, we've tried to answer the ones that we can answer. Uh, many people have asked questions about the venue and about the accommodations. We have questions about Florida in general. We have questions about the conference and the workshops and the presenters. And so today I wanted to do a very high level overview of what to expect uh, at the conference, both in person and virtually, so that you can make an informed decision because we're coming up to the time where registration, though it's still open as we go along, the cost of registration um, has is increasing. And so we want to make sure that you have at least enough information to make an informed decision now. If you're someone who's on the fence, you don't know if you're gonna attend virtually or in person, we want um, you to have that information. S hopefully you're going to attend, uh, because TMA is known for this annual patient conference. And it's one of the things that we are so proud that we are able to offer our community. We wanna to continue to do that at a very high standard. And so because of that, we do need you to attend either virtually or in person. And we're here today to help you make that decision. And so I'm gonna share my screen and we'll get started with our discussion today. And hopefully you can see uh, the screen. Again, this is the Myositis Association 2022 International Annual Patient Conference. The theme this year is a focus on the future and we will be meeting together in person from September 8th, that's a Thursday, through September 11th, a Sunday, at the Carib Royale Resort in Orlando, Florida. Again, today I'm going to give you a high-level overview. Will you leave today knowing every little teeny itty bitty thing that's going to happen at the conference? Absolutely not. Uh, the conference is still in, in the course of being planned. We want to make sure that whatever we present is done in excellence and at a standard that we can be proud of. And so today we're going to give you as much as we can and just know that we're going to continue um, from a staffing standpoint to be working to make sure that this is an outstanding experience that you will enjoy and that you will remember and appreciate. So uh, September 8th through the 11th at the Carib Royale Resort, Resort in Orlando, Florida. In person, again, Thursday through Sunday in Orlando, Florida. I like the little palm tree and the little guy, he's there in person enjoying Florida. So what are the benefits or some of the benefits of attending the annual patient conference in person? Again, I've never been in person. And so my information is coming from the many, many members of our community who have attended in person and have shared that these are the reasons why the annual patient conference has been life-changing for them and why they have pushed for us as an organization to make sure that we offered it in this format again this year. Um, the networking. So I've been told that it's a great opportunity to meet new people, to make new friends, to reunite with people you've met at previous conferences. Our medical advisory board. And so the medical advisory board, as I've said many times, is one of the things that differentiates TMA from other organizations in that we host an international medical advisory board of some of the top experts in science and clinical care in myositis, um, not just in the United States, but globally internationally. And so as part of our annual patient conference, TMA invests 
to bring in members of this medical advisory board to teach you, to offer and to facilitate workshops for you, to spend time with you and to see and interact with our patient community. You may not know this, but even experts in myositis care only see a, a small percentage of patients in the course of their treating patients in the course of a year. Why is that? We are rare disease. And so anytime we can put patients in front of these clinicians and scientists, it just brings uh, an opportunity to amplify your voices, for them to see you, to see how the disease affects each of you so differently. And it's always a wonderful opportunity, not just for you to be in their presence, but for them to be in yours. And so again, this year, we are bringing members of our advisory board internationally into Florida to help facilitate this conference. There'll be opportunities for disease breakouts. And so everything won't be for everyone. There'll be opportunities where we'll break apart, where you'll be able to congregate with those experience, experiencing the same type of myositis that you may be living with, as well as um, caregiver groups and caregiver focus workshops as well. You'll have an opportunity in person to meet our board of directors. All of them are excited to come in and to meet each of you and to tell you about their impact and engagement with the Myositis uh, Association and how they have met some of their objectives as board of directors and their vision for the organization in the short term and the long term. There'll be some special activities. We'll talk about a few of them today and there'll be free time. So there'll be time for you to network on your own, to make personal connections, to if you are interested to enjoy the resort and to enjoy Florida in, gen gen in general. And also, and I think this is the best one, you'll get to spend a little bit of time with the TMA staff. Many of you know Aisha. Aisha has been here for 5 million years. I think it's more like 15 or 16, but it's been a long time. So many of you are familiar with her. Uh, however, the rest of us who are staffed at the Myositis Association have started uh, after I've been here since 2021. And so many of us have not had the wonderful opportunity to meet you face to face. And we'd love the opportunity to spend this time with you. And uh, again, there'll be special add-ons. There'll be swag that you'll receive in person and some other uh, surprises that we will share as well. Now, because I have not attended the annual patient conference, I wanted you to hear a very, very short testimonial from our Board of Director member, Ms. Lori Worthington Boyer. Lori has attended a number of conferences and I'm excited that she was willing to share her testimonial with you all. Hello, my name is Lori Worthington Boyer and I'm a proud TMA board member. I'm reaching out to you today in regards to the annual patient conference taking place in September in Orlando, Florida, my home state. I've been attending conferences for the last nine years and every year I learn something new at the APC. I thought I'd help you out by putting together my top three reasons why you should attend the annual patient conference. First, to connect. As an attendee, you can connect with other myositis patients, care partners, and loved ones throughout this myositis community, therefore setting you up with a good network of support from that day forward. The second reason is to communicate. You have the opportunity to communicate with the world leading experts in myositis disease, which is our medical advisory board members. What they share at the conference is absolutely priceless. And the third reason is to collaborate. You can collaborate with TMA staff, board members, and your local support group leaders and members at the annual patient conference, therefore being able to support one another after the APC concludes. So, whether you've been newly diagnosed or if you've been living with myositis disease for some time now, you will find a breakout session to meet your needs as well. So, I hope to see you in Orlando so that we can connect, communicate, and collaborate together. Take care. Thanks. So excited to have Lori share that testimonial with us. I'm going to share the PowerPoint presentation again with you all and pick up where we left off. Okay, so again, in person, you're gonna have some special add-ons that we're planning for you, some swag and some surprises. All right, here are our medical advisory board members that are headed to the conference. Hopefully you are familiar with some of these names. Again, these are the best and the brightest in the world. These are some of the top 
clinicians, uh, researchers, scientists in the myositis space, and they're coming to be of service to you. And I want to remind you that these uh, uh, clinicians, doctors, researchers, scientists, they're coming in a volunteer role. They're taking off of their day work assignments, and they're traveling into Orlando to be of service to the patient community of the Myositis Association. I think our furthest traveling is from Australia. We have someone coming from France. We have someone coming from Sweden, um, Europe, uh, England. Uh, so these uh, these medical advisory board members that are traveling in to spend their time and to lend their expertise to us, it is, again, like Lori said, priceless and very much invaluable. Okay, so what's it like in Orlando in September? This says that you can expect the summer heat to cool off a little bit by September, okay? And that the average expected for this year, the high is around 90 degrees and the low is around 73 degrees. It sounds pretty hot, but I will tell you here in Maryland last week, we hit 106 degrees. And so uh, that 90 degrees sounds pretty uh, comfortable right now. You can also expect around 12 hours of sunshine a day. Although the majority of what we'll do as the conference will happen indoors, you do have obviously the opportunity to come and go as you please and to enjoy um, the weather if you're able to be in the sun uh, in Florida at the resort. So we'll be at the Carib Royale Resort in Orlando. This is a newly renovated luxury resort and convention center. And some of you may remember that TMA held the annual patient conference here before in the past. And so you're familiar with the facility, but it's been completely renovated since the time that TMA was last here. And one of the reasons why we chose this was not only the familiarity with the resort and the facility, but um, the renovation included a number of upgrades that um, increased the ADA accommodations that are available at the resort. What are the amenities? Okay, at the resort, there's a swimming pool and um, hot tubs, tennis and basketball courts. If this stuff applies to you, it may be exciting or may be exciting for some of the uh, companions that you have traveling with you. There's an arcade, a fitness center. There's a 1.5 mile running and walking trail. There are five restaurants and bars on site. Um, pet friendly accommodations. The convention center, which we will get to know very intimately. Um, there's a spa available, bicycle rental, catch and release fishing, and of course, it's located adjacent really to the Disney parks, and so that it does provide transportation to the Disney parks and to Disney Springs. The convention center, which is right there on the property, so if you're staying at the resort, you don't have to leave the property to attend our annual patient conference. Um, there are meet meetings and workshops, and all of them take place on one floor. There are accessible restrooms available to us. The lobby is very spacious, as you can see here. And there are relaxation and seating areas available. And there are dedicated rooms and areas for TMA. And so that means that the section of the convention center that is assigned for us to use will be in that um, section, uh, pretty much exclusive of other conferences or conventions that are happening at the same time. What are the accommodations? So the Carib Royale offers two types of accommodations. Um, they are suites and villas. And so we have negotiated a really wonderful group rate for our participants. If you're interested in a suite, that is a one bedroom suite. That means either a king bed or two queen beds. The group rate for that is $150, $59 a night. And the resort fee has been waived. So there's normally a $25 a day resort fee and they have waived that for our group. You can see some of the accommodations uh, and the amenities that are located within the suite here. One thing is that each suite comes with a separate living room that does have a full-size couch, um, as well as an ergonomic workspace. So um, you have plenty of room in the suites to um, share if that's what you're choosing to do or to um, really feel comfortable when you're in there and staying there at the resort. There are also villas available and the villas are really, really big. They are two bedroom, which means they host a king bed and a double queen room. So that's a king bed and then two queen beds, as well as a living room with a queen size sofa bed. And these are all out, full kitchen, full refrigerator. If you want to cook and bring in your food, you're able to do that. There are two bathrooms, the king bath is an in suite, um, three televisions, there's laundry available there, a screen patio, and access to private villa pool. The group rate for this is $334 a night. Again, the resort fee has been waived for our participants. And accessibility. And so again, this uh, resort is um, very uh, 
equipped with accessible rooms and we have reserved all of them. And so they are available until they're no longer available. And that means that their accessible rooms have all of the same luxury as the suites and villas that we've described already. But inside those rooms, you will find bathrooms that have custom roll-in showers. They have um, larger layouts for easy mobility pathways in addition to some rooms that will have visual and audio aids. When you call or reserve your room, you will need to specify or request the availability for an accessible room. Attendee support. And so as usual for the annual patient conference, for all registered attendees, we'll be sending you a list that contain directions from the airport, our ground transportation options from the local airport, a listing of preferred rental car companies, power wheelchair scooter rental companies, and dining suggestions for the area of the annual patient conference. What are our COVID-19 precautions? This has been a question that's come up because COVID-19 is still alive. Um, and we all you know, know that it is still something that we're living with daily. Um, certainly we are, we believe to be, we're in a better place today than we were this time last year when we made the decision to stay with a fully virtual conference. Of course, we cannot tell you um, about what decisions to make regarding your vac vaccination, but we do know it to be a fact that if you are vaccinated and boosted, that is your best protection against the extreme extremities of COVID-19. And so if you are vaccinated and boosted, you are in the best position to, um, to be shielded from it and to, if you do experience it, not experience it at, a, um, at an extreme level. We're also going to make sure that you self-check. And that means that if you are experiencing any symptoms, the cough, the sore throat, the extreme fatigue outside of the fatigue that you may already experience being um, part of our patient community or being just a human being, if you're experiencing fever, if you're experiencing um, you know, the achiness or any other COVID-19 symptoms, we're going to ask you to self-check and evaluate yourself daily. We do have an immunocompromised community, and we want to make sure that if you are someone that knows you're sick, that you do not participate um, if that is the case. We're also, along with the hotel, going to be sanitizing. And so the hotel does a great job of sanitizing the suites and the villas, as well as the meeting spaces. And then as a staff, we'll be taking precautions to make sure that things that are common, like use of pens and other um, convention materials are sanitized. We'll also be providing and making available to you some personal protective equipment, including masks and sanitizer. And we ask that you use those at your comfort level. In addition, um, one of the great things about what we do anyway is that we tend to make more space for our patient community so that we're making space for our medical um, assistive equipment. And so because of that, we'll be very conscious of making sure that there's space in our meeting rooms, that there's space in our dining rooms where people would be unmasked. Um, and we ask that you are just conscious of all of this. And so what I'm saying is make sure that you are um, participating at your comfort level. If you are someone that wants to wear a mask the entire time, we certainly um, encourage you to do that. We will be um, going along with the state and local regulations for COVID-19 instructions with the facility. And so, um, as you know, at this time, it is not, there is no mandatory mask uh, mandate, but certainly if you feel more comfortable, um, we encourage you to do that and we will be providing some personal protective equipment. What I want to say is that the self-check is probably the most, if not um, the most important uh, aspect of COVID-19. And I wanted to share this and say, do not be like me, who when I knew I didn't feel well for the virtual summit, this is me in my office on the day of our Myositis Awareness Month virtual summit, knew I felt horrible, didn't know I had COVID, but knew I felt horrible and really should have stayed home. And so I shared that as a little laugh, not really funny for all of the staff members that I subjected and, and exposed to my COVID-19, but the self-check is super, super important. If you know that you do not feel well and that you're experiencing symptoms, the expectation is of course that you would not participate. 
Let's talk a little bit about our in-person attendee schedule. So we start on Thursday, September 8th, and we're just going to run through a couple of things. Again, I'm not going to be able to tell you everything that's going to happen, but we'll give you a little taste of what to expect, specifically around your timing, so that you know when to be in place and what's available to you. Here's the thing. This is your annual patient conference, and so you will participate at a level that in which you feel comfortable. So that means if you want to attend every time we open the door, then we'll be glad to have you there. If you want to attend um, specific parts of the conference and then maybe retreat to uh, find respite or rest or to do other things, then you're certainly able to do that as well. Um, our registration will open on Thursday, September 8th at nine o'clock. And so that means you can come, you can get your materials, your badges, your wristbands, everything that's available to you at that time. Our formal conference will not begin until noon. So that's important for you to know. We do have a private um, special event for our support and affinity group leaders that's gonna happen from 9.30 to 11 o'clock a.m. But at 12 o'clock is when our welcome and our keynote address happens. That's the official kickoff of the conference. Immediately following that welcome and keynote address, as you are accustomed to at TMA at the APC, we'll be dividing in our disease groups um, for getting acquainted sessions. And we have some members of our patient community that are going to moderate those sessions so that you, if you are a patient living with IBM, you can be in a, a, a workshop breakout room with other patients with IBM, moderated by a patient with IBM, to talk about what to expect from the conference, to be able to ask questions, to meet other people at the conference right then that um, with whom you share uh, the commonality of that disease. And we'll do that breakout breakout. Um, type of getting acquainted sessions for all of our disease types, as well as one for our care partners. You'll then have the opportunity to meet the board of directors. And this is exciting because you can see who's behind the scenes um, stewarding the ship for TMA. This is also the time you can learn more about how to become um, a candidate to serve on the board of directors. And we'll be making sure that we have uh, applications available for those who may be interested in um, self-nominating for the process for this year. Then we'll have some breakout sessions. We'll have our attendee reception. So this is at 5.45 to seven o'clock on the first day. Normally I'm told that this is the wine and cheese. This is called the wine and cheese. We're changing it up just a little bit this year. We're having a Disney sing-along attendee reception. Why? Because we are miles from Disney World in the heart of Orlando and we're gonna have a theme if we're not gonna have anything else. So this Disney sing-along attendee reception is the wine and cheese. It is important. We'll talk a little bit um, more about it later, but it's important for you to know that all of these things that are listed on the schedule and that will be on the published agenda that we'll send out in the, in the coming weeks, as well as what you'll receive there, these are for registered attendees. Okay, so we'll talk a little bit more about that later. What are the breakout sessions? I'll give you a couple. And everything, of course, is subject to be moved around and shifted, but we're going to have a Myositis 101 session. We're going to talk about the research landscape in myositis. We're going to talk about the benefits of physical therapy, how to find inspiration, managing overlap myositis. So those of us or those of you who are living with more than one autoimmune dis disease, it's, it's very um, in instrumental that you learn how to manage overlap myositis. And then we'll also have a fundraising clinic that um, is going to teach you everything you need to know to be an active ambassador for the cause to help us raise additional funds for research and for patient programs. Okay, on Friday, we have early bird sessions for those who like to get up early and um, you know maybe uh, be involved with some sessions early. And we're gonna do things like meditation and um, we're gonna learn about skin care. We're gonna have two actually in our early bird sessions, two hand exercise sessions um, conducted by uh, Malin Regard, who's coming all the way from um, Europe to participate. One of those will be IBM focused and the other will be for overall myositis. And she's told us that there are specific hand exercises that are um, uh, beneficial to IBM patients and then others that would extend to the broader community. So she's gonna get up early and do two sessions there. Uh, we're gonna have breakfast. We're gonna do more breakout sessions and then you'll have a little break because our exhibitors are gonna be there. Our sponsors and our exhibitors are gonna be there to speak to you, to hand out um, their materials and giveaways. And so we wanna make sure you have time to visit all of them. More breakout sessions. And then we'll have a lunch where you'll have the opportunity to network and spend more time with others in our community. And then more breakout sessions. A lot of breakout sessions, because that's why we're there to learn. 
One of the things I want to note for those of you, Lori said she's been to nine conferences. We tried not to change too much this year. With it being my first year, I wanted to, and our first year back since the pandemic, I wanted those of you who are returning to feel a sense of familiarity with what we're doing. And so we didn't change a whole lot. But one thing we did change is that most of the breakout sessions in the past have been for one hour. And we've extended all of our breakout sessions for 90 minutes. And we've also built in 15 minutes of traveling time between breakout sessions to give you time to catch your breath, to use the facilities, to get from one place to the other without feeling like you're going to miss anything or be late. And so we built in that extra time. Um, so what are some of the breakout sessions that are planned for Friday? We have a lot going on. Um, we're going to talk about anger as part of um, the stages of grief. We're going to have a clinical overview of dermatomyositis. We're going to talk about health, wellness, and nutrition and making better choices. There's going to be a show and tell session. So if you have some hints, tools, hacks, bring them to the conference to show off. We're going to talk about what works in helping people um, with their daily living. And we're going to learn about antisynthetase syndrome. And we're going to learn all about patient advocacy. And then we're going to have a relationship session that's called In Sickness and in Health. That'll be for you and your care partner or caregiver or your spouse or whoever's with you to just talk about some of the changing landscape and relationships when someone is experiencing a chronic illness. We're going to learn about swallowing and we're going to learn about complementary alternative medications. We're going to have an aqua therapy session in the hotel pool. So bring those swimsuits and bikinis, keep them clean for the families. And we're going to talk about care partners experiencing compassion fatigue. Okay. We're going to also learn about updates and clinical trials and myositis. And we're going to have our very good friends from myositis support and understanding MSU. You've heard of them. MSU is going to be there and they're going to lead a workshop to talk all about their organization and what they do and their patient-focused uh, programming, their patient-focused research initiatives, and some of the things they do that are, that are very different than what TMA does. And we've learned that the way our two organizations coexist so well is because they do things that we don't necessarily have the capacity to do, and we do things that they don't have the capacity to do. But here's your opportunity to learn directly from them all about their organization and how you can get involved there too. We're going to talk about myositis and COVID-19. We're going to learn all about interstitial lung disease. We're going to talk about the IBM patient journey from diagnosis all the way to clinical management. We're going to learn how to enroll in a clinical study. We're going to talk about reasonable accommodations you should be able to ask for if you're still working. We're going to learn about cancer and myositis and the correlation there. And then we're going to have an all-star presenta presentation on skin and dermatomyositis. Okay. And you see here, you'll have some free time to catch some dinner, to um, network, to take a break. And then we're going to have our bingo after dark. What is bingo after dark? We'll learn, we'll learn about that in a little bit. But one of the things I heard on my listening tour is that people wanted more social time. It can't be all myositis all the time, right? We want time to enjoy ourselves, to have a break from from the rigors of the disease and the emotional, how emotionally taxing the disease can be. And so we're going to do bingo after dark and we'll talk about that in a little bit. All right, in person, sep September 10th, which is Saturday. Breakfast is a little bit earlier, 7 a.m. to 8.30 a.m. It's gonna be grab and go, why? Because Saturday is all about Fun Fit Flex Orlando. If you have not heard about Fun Fit Flex, then we are not doing a great job. Fun Fit Flex is TMA's brand new national signature awareness and fundraising event. Last year, we piloted it in four communities. This year, it's happening virtually and in six communities. And one of those six communities is Orlando at the annual patient conference. It'll be a little bit of a condensed version. It's normally a three to three and a half hour event. We're gonna do it in two hours and we're gonna show you what Fun Fit Flex is all about right there at the annual patient conference. And we can't wait for you to get involved and to see what we're doing to build community awareness and empathy and education around myositis in the broader community and broader world. 
Okay, and we're going to jump right back from there into our sessions. This is our day to really hear from our medical advisory board. So from 1030 to 1230, we'll have our medical advisory board town hall. I think it's 17 of them will be on a panel so you can learn more about each of them and their work. You can ask open forum questions and then we're going to break for lunch. Lunch, this time you'll learn, have the opportunity to meet people who are from the same region, maybe as you are, or have some other commonality. And then we're going to return to breakout sessions where you will have uninhibited, is that the right word? Uninhibited Q&A with the medical advisory board members. So we're going to break up into um, different breakout rooms, IBM, ILD, interstitial lung disease, DM, PM, and NM, research. Um, and we're going to have our medical advisory board members there to answer your questions in open forum, okay? Then we're going to go right into breakout sessions led by the MAB members. And we're going to learn about research and clinical study design. We're going to learn about understanding the genetic risk factors of myositis. I know many people are concerned about the, uh, the genetic uh, factors and if it is something they should be concerned about as their lineage continues. We're going to learn about energy preservation strategies, and then we're going to have several disease-focused uh, workshops on IBM, on INMM, and other things during that session as well. Okay, this is exciting. And then you're going to be on your own after five o'clock on Saturday. So that's your time to do you experience Orlando, get a bite to eat with friends, just enjoy being at the conference. And lastly, in person on Sunday, <clears throat> September 11th, we're going to start with our early bird sessions. Again, we're going to have meditation. We talked about having a hand exercise. We're going to have another surprise for you guys. And then we're also going to have a non-denominational finding strength through faith uh, opportunity during that early bird session on Sunday. We're going to stop and recognize the fact that Sunday is September the 11th and do a very brief 9-11 tribute because it's important for us to not gloss over the fact that we are together on that day. And then you'll hear from our patient and family advisory council. Our, uh, we call it the PFAC. Our PFAC has been working tirelessly all year long on special projects for the organization. And we are excited for them to share with you what they are working on, okay? And then we have our last ses set of breakout sessions, okay? We're going to talk about the financial burdens of living with myositis. We're going to talk about travel resources and accessibility. How do you become more involved with TMA as an ambassador? We call them myositis mavens. And I'm going to talk to you all and teach you if you're interested how to become more involved. And a, a few other surprising sessions as well. And then when we close, we're going to have our closing remarks. And during those closing remarks, you're going to learn a couple of things. You're going to find out where next year's 2023 annual patient conference is scheduled to take place. You're, if you're in, in person and you're present, you're going to have the opportunity in a drawing to win uh, two free registrations and full hotel coverage for next year's annual patient conference. And we're so excited that we have the opportunity um, based on sponsorship to do that year over year. Okay, and so that's Sunday, September 11th. Again, we're gonna have our auction. We're gonna have raffles. We're gonna do door prizes and have some other fun additions all throughout our time together, Thursday through Sunday. But that should give you a brief overview of what to expect. Now, meals. What meals are covered and what meals aren't covered? Okay, so if you're with us on Thursday, no, we're not giving you no breakfast, no lunch, or dinner, or anything. You're on your own. Uh, but if you attend our Disney sing-along uh, attendee reception, that's a wine and cheese. We'll have some light appetizers. We'll have wine, cheese, fruit available for you there, okay? On Friday, we're serving breakfast and we're serving lunch. You're on your own for dinner. But if you attend our, our bingo after dark event, we'll have some uh, light snacks and refreshments for you there as well. And on Saturday, a couple of things. We're having breakfast together and we're having lunch together. Your dinner is on your own. But if you participate in Fun Fit Flex, you'll learn that part of Fun Fit Flex is that we have um, snacks. We'll call them snacks for our community. And usually we have fruit and bars and chips and fun things that you can pick up there at that event. And then on Sunday, prior to the close, we will be serving breakfast. And so you're on your own um, for the rest of the day on Sunday too. And this is just for planning purposes and all of our reg registered attendees are gonna receive all of this information. 
All right, special activities, Disney sing-along attendee reception. This is for registered attendees. So if you are a registered attendee, you will be invited on Thursday to attend this special event. It's going to be the regular wine and cheese networking. But with the twist, we're going to have a little bit of Disney, a little bit of uh, karaoke uh, opportunities going on and a sing-along going on. And so if you want to come out wearing your Disney uh, paraphernalia, please do. We're excited to just infuse this a little bit of fun in Orlando into this longstanding attendee reception event. Special activity on Friday, bingo after dark. This is free for registered attendees. Okay, so if you're a registered conference attendee, you're already invited to come to this at no additional expense. This for us is a signature event. It gives you the opportunity over however many games that we play to win fantastic prizes. The prizes get better with each game. It's a fun night. We'll have music. It's after dark because it's going to be a glow event. So we'll have some glow things, maybe some necklaces, some bracelets. Um, some things available for you. If you have companions that aren't registered or family members that aren't registered, they are able to attend this event at a cost. And we will publish that cost and they're able to um, purchase tickets. Also, this will be open to um, others to attend as well. And then Fun Fit Flex Orlando. This is free. It's open to the community. All you have to do is come. Just come and prepare to have a good time. I listened to, I was talking to a patient last week and she said, you know, nothing in myositis is fun. Why don't we do something that's fun? And I'm thinking, fun, fun fit flex. Why don't you know about fun fit flex? Everyone needs to know about fun fit flex. And if you um, have not registered either for an event in your local community or the virtual event, please today go to www.funfitflex.org. Learn about the event learn about the event. This is for our patient community. And we rarely see uh, events like this in rare disease. Why? Because they feel like the diseases don't impact enough people to do things like this. And we say that is not the case. We need to create more awareness now than ever. So you will be in a position to help us do that in Orlando. And we hope that you will consider getting registered, maybe even choosing to fundraise and to notify your peers about this activity. But we're going to do it and do it up big at the APC. All right, so here are some pictures from previous annual patient conferences. Again, I've never been in person. I'm so excited. Uh, but here's some pictures. Uh, so you can kind of just get the feel, you know, maybe we won't be as tight together because of the COVID-19 stuff, but just being together where other people um, uh, knowing about the disease, living with the disease, wanting to learn more about the disease, having the experts there is just an unprecedented opportunity. So I wanted to share these pictures of previous annual patient conferences so that you could see a little bit about the, uh, about how the energy is palpable, even through the pictures. Um, and so you know it'll be great in person as well. All right. Now, you can't come in person this year. And that's okay. Some people, the travel is, is, you know, not something that they're able to take on. Some people, even if they could travel, can't travel the distance, you know, with these things, the location is never going to be great for everyone at the same time. And that's one of the reasons TMA tries to move the event from location to location to give people an opportunity to come. Um, but this year, because we were able to successfully execute the virtual APC in the past two years, it was a request from the community to offer some virtual options. And I know in the past, we've done some limited streaming at the in-person, but we're going to do a little bit more than we've done in the past um, for our virtual participants. So if you're participating virtually and you've registered for virtual, um, the virtual registration is $75. That covers your whole household. That means you don't have to tell your relatives to step out of the room when you're watching the conference. They can join you. Everybody in your house can join. The virtual offerings are limited to September 9th and 10th, which is the Friday and the Saturday. I will tell you, people ask all the time, just have it virtually. Having what we call a hybrid event is so cumbersome. Okay, It's basically like hosting two separate conferences, and it pulls on the expenses. It's very expensive to host virtual from an in-person environment, and it also pulls on capacity. And so we are happy to be able to offer what we can for you all this year. And we are excited to see how this uh, hybrid annual patient conference is delivered. And hopefully you will, um, you will enjoy what we have for you. So you will be at home in your household viewing 
uh, select conference offerings and um, we are excited that we'll be able to deliver those to you virtually and electronically. What does your schedule look like? It looks a little different than the in-person, of course. So on Friday um, and Saturday are the two days you'd be able to participate. On Friday around 9.15, this is all Eastern Standard Time, uh, you'll have a welcome and then you're going to go right into workshops. And so on Friday, you'll have three workshop sessions that are delivered to you, 9.30, You'll have that same nine, 90 minutes, 11.30 and then 2.30, and you'll um, end at 4 p.m. On Saturday, you are going to have the opportunity to join in on our Fun Fit Flex virtual event, which is going to be the Orlando event live stream. So you'll be able to see what it is, hopefully feel included, um, hear the presentations from the stage and see some of the activities. And we are excited that you all can participate in that from home. Um, at 1030, you will also be participating in our medical advisory board town hall session with all of our medical advisory board members. And then you'll have two sessions on Saturday, one at 215 and one at 330. So you have time to get up, get lunch, um, manage your schedule how you would like and, and be part of these sessions live via online um, for Friday and Saturday. Post-conference, and this is important, all of the breakout sessions will be recorded at the conference. All of the workshops, not the early birds, but all of the main workshop 90 minute sessions will be recorded. Once they are edited, they're gonna be made available to all of our registered attendees, whether you were in person or virtual. So you will have the opportunity um, once those videos are edited to uh, watch the playback from all of the sessions. And that's instrumental, whether you're virtual, and didn't get a chance to participate in everything, or you're in person. Because when you're in person, you're also going to be picking and choosing sessions. And so you can't attend everything. And we want to make sure that there's nothing that you have to miss by um, investing in uh, recording these sessions and then editing them for your consumption afterward. OK. Now, I added this just because, right, other TMA virtual offerings, and that is because we had so many people rallying for us to offer a virtual, virtual component to the APC. And some of the people said to me, you know, we want to learn too. We, we, you know, we want to, the ability to participate. And so I also wanted to remind you all, everyone, that we also have ongoing virtual offerings. So these same medical advisory board members every single month host an Ask the Doc session. And that's for you all to hear about their work, the advancements in myositis, and then to ask some questions. That's virtual and it happens every month. We had one last week with rheumatologist Dr. Florine Ernst with us. And I believe next month in August, we'll, be, we'll have pulmonologists on to talk about um, lung disease in myositis. And so take advantage of that. We also do a monthly empowerment clinic where we talk about things that affect daily living in some uh, in the life of someone's uh, journeying with myositis. And they span so many helpful topics. I want to say the last one was all about necrotizing myopathy. We had Dr. Andy Mammon and a community member on, uh, Colleen Layton on with us. And in August, um, hasn't been announced yet, but we'll have Dr. Tom Lloyd as well as, um, oh my God, one of our, our veteran affinity group leaders um, there to talk about the intersection of IBM and ALS. And so these are virtual opportunities to learn. And here's the thing, we didn't want to limit learning to the annual patient conference. We wanted to give you the opportunity to learn all year long. And these come at no cost. So please make sure if you'd like to, that you're participating in these. It breaks my heart when I hear people say, well, there's nothing for us that can't come to the APC when we've really transitioned to offering a lot of virtual education and resource opportunities to the community. And lastly, we have our affinity groups. So if you're interested in learning more about those, you can visit myositis.org. We have eight different affinity groups. They all meet monthly from the uh, LGBTQIA plus group to the women of color, women with IBM to men managing myositis, to our rainbow, oh, we did that rainbow warriors already, to our Adelante Spanish speaking group and our uh, myositis living uh, uh, patients um, who have previous military service, our veterans group and others. So please get connected, get connected. Now, I am so excited to announce for the first time that we opened up applications for our annual patient conference scholarships and every single person who submitted a scholarship application was approved. 
And this was due to the generosity of our community members. In fact, our largest donor to the APC scholarships for 2022 sent in a note to say that prior to the pandemic, when he was able to tra travel to the annual patient conference, it was so life-changing for him to get connected and to learn in that way that because he had the means, he wanted to make sure that others had that same opportunity. And so because of the generosity of those of you in our community, we've been able to grant 100% of the scholarships that were applied for in 2022. 76% of those were granted for in-person attendance and 24% of those were granted for the virtual um, aspect and component of the conference. All right, here's just a quote because we haven't talked about our theme at all. The theme is all about a focus on the future. And so this quote by Leonard Sweet says, the future is not something we enter, right? The future is something we create. So we're not going to sit by and let life dictate for us what the future will bring. Instead, we're gonna step in and create something beautiful and special. And hopefully as a myositis community, we can do that together. I am now gonna open the floor for Q and A. Um, you can use the Q&A feature, and if there are any questions that I'm able to answer that I haven't already answered in the content, I'm happy to do so. If there are questions I don't know the answer to yet, I'm happy to say that as well. And what we'll do is continue to avail the information to you all as we develop it. Just know that 95% of our attention is focused on the annual patient conference at this point, and it's to make sure that you all have a fulfilling experience. And hopefully, if you are on the fence, you have enough information now to um, be able to make your decision. Okay, here's a question. Will the meeting today be recorded? Yes, it's being recorded, and we will share. Okay, thank you. Next question. I have so I only have so much energy. Is there a list of meetings just for polymyositis? So one of the things we're going to do once we have the final schedule uh, with which session happens at, at each at each point on the schedule um, on the timed agenda, we're going to make tracks. These are suggested tracks. These are tracks for if you're someone living with DM, if you're a care partner, if you are a first time attendee, we're gonna create tracks to give you suggested sessions to attend. And so that you can make decisions about how to utilize your time um, at the conference. Great question. Okay. On the pictures displayed from a previous gathering, the chairs appear to be a normal height. Are there higher chairs available? My husband would not be able to get up from the regular chair height. That is a great question. Again, remember, I've never attended in person and I'm told that people do all kinds of things to make sure that the chairs are accessible, including stacking them, which I don't think is the safest um, option. People bring um, lifts and pillows and other things to make sure that the chairs are accommodating. We are looking into, and apparently they've looked into in the past as well, some rentals of some more like director type chairs that would be higher and a little bit more accessible. So we are working on that, but it is um, an issue that we are aware of and one that we are hopeful to um, resolve prior to this year's conference. Okay. When will you have a schedule for the breakout session topics? Well, we're firming everything up, okay? And so um, we're about 95% of the way there. When you're dealing with a lot of uh, facilitators that are traveling in and flight schedules and all that, it does take time, but um, we're about to firm that up. And I would say probably in the next week that would go only to registered attendees, okay? Yes. And uh, is there a track for necrotizing myopathy? And so we're going to do tracks for all of the uh, sub-disease types. And these are just suggestions, right? Because you may be someone who can gather more information from a session that you wouldn't think you would be um, suited to attend. And so we don't want to uh, select sessions for you, but we will create a suggestion of a track of um, sessions that might be useful or helpful to you based on disease type. And then from there, you can make your own decisions. Okay. All right. Is it possible to find out who the vendors will be? Yes. So we will be sharing uh, with registered attendees the vendor list. We have some sponsors on board already, and we're going to be uh, making sure that we uh, uh, promote the fact that we have some very generous corporate sponsors that are on board already. We're um, hopefully um, bringing on a few more because we need them to help help us execute the conference. And then uh, we'll have vendors hopefully in place for bingo vendors in place for fun fit flex and then <clears throat> excuse me overall um conference vendors available as well and we'll share all of that with our um registered attendees 
Okay. I don't, oh, here's another one. Will there be scooters for rent on site or do we need to arrange that separately? Okay, so there are no scooters available on site, but part of what our in-person attendees will receive from us is a listing of vendors in the area that do rent um, power wheelchairs and scooters. And we actually had our board retreat earlier in the year um, at this hotel and um, many of these vendors actually delivered the um, power scooters and the wheelchairs right to the site of the hotel, which is very helpful to our attendees. Okay, I'm just gonna give a couple more seconds for any additional Q&A that you want to ask. Okay, is there going to be medical assistance available as a precaution? Okay, so that's a really great question. So of course, um, we're gonna have first aid and those kind of things. We're also gonna have the intuition to be able to call 911 if necessary, and there are medical facilities in the area. That's something that as a um, voluntary health organization, we're always um, in tune to what medical facilities in the area. And I, I can't speak for them, but I will say this, there will be some of the top uh, myositis, clinicians in the world at the gathering for the full time. And so um, at the very least, we'll have the expertise present to know um, how to triage any emergency situations, whether people um, uh, need to um, have an ambulance or other, um, other support while they're there. Great question. Will the breakout sessions be limited in size and capacity? Yes, and so we will, um, part of what we're doing is we have enough rooms and we're offering enough sessions. I think at any given time, there'll be six to seven breakout sessions happening at a time. The rooms will be preset with room for seating as well as rooms a room left for wheelchairs um, and scooters to come in and to have room. And so once the rooms are at capacity, um, based on that preset seating, um, we will have to steward others to um, other breakout sessions. And that's also one of the reasons why we're going to record uh, and make sure that everyone has access to everyone, uh, every session after the conference. Great question. Okay, I just want to give you guys a couple of more minutes for any additional questions. Again, we're going to record this. We're going to make it available um, to our community. Some of you, let me tell you, some of y'all, like, you have no intention of coming virtually or uh, or online because I saw the registration list for this webinar, but I'm just glad you want to know what's going on because that tells me you are engaged and you may not can come this year, but maybe you want to come next year and you can help us by informing what the experience is like, by telling us what's great, what needs to change. These questions are so helpful. So thank you for being here today. All right, just a couple of more minutes for any additional questions. Okay, if there are no additional questions, what I will say is this. Remember there, oh, I see one just came through. Oh, thank you. The question says, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to each of you. Let me just say that we understand um, very well that this disease and, and its effect on your lives, on the uncertainty, on everything else is, is, is a lot. And we want to provide this experience for you for a number of reasons so that you can get the education and information that you need so that you can meet others living with the disease and help create your village and more of a network. And so that as an organization, we can, um, we can provide what you need to have a better quality of life. Another question just came in. It says, will there be pre-registering for specific break breakout sessions? No, we won't do that. But, um, and if we, at this point, we don't feel like um, we'll be overwhelmed um, with attendees not being able to attend preferred sessions. But if it does seem like that, we may take a different direction, but there is no pre-registering. All right, I will say this. I told you all of all of the wonderful benefits of attending in person. For those of you who are able to attend in person, please consider it. When you have these myositis doctors giving of their valuable, valuable time to come and be of service to you, we want you to be there um, if possible. And I already told you of all of the benefits of being in person, but certainly now that you've spent about an hour with me, you must know that coming to see me is one of the, the benefits. I can't wait to lay eyes on many of you to... Um, put names with faces and to make that personal connection. Um, all of you are so very special to our community. And if you aren't able to come, please consider 
registering virtually so that you can attain the information, you can still participate as an active member of our community, and that um, you can, if you're able to attend uh, based on geography, when the conference is somewhere else, you can plan for that. Or if you are just able to participate virtually in an ongoing way, you're still connected. Um, if you need any support or help in, uh, in registering, please reach out to us, TMA at myositis.org, or you can call the office and we will walk you through your registration. We will support whether you're registering in person or virtually. Um, if you uh, have any additional suggestions, things that we haven't thought of to make your conference experience better, please send those in as well. And oh, thank you. Today's session, most helpful. See you in Orlando. See you in Orlando too. Hey guys, I can't wait to see you um, virtually, in person, and thank you so much for your support of the Myositis Association and the work we do for our patient community. Talk soon. Bye.